We're on the Flinders River, about 50 kilometres from the Gulf, and we've found something absolutely amazing. Now we know that, say, about from between 130 million years ago to, say, about 90 million years ago, there was an inland sea in Australia. It started to flow through into Australia from the Gulf approximately 130 million years ago. Now, I'm standing on a piece of limestone that has been exposed as the river has flowed this way over potentially thousands of years. If we look to the banks, we can't see the limestone, so it's only here at the dried up base of this river that we're able to see something as fascinating as this. It's an ammonite, which means it's a cephalopod. Cephalopods are groups of animals such as the octopuses, the squids, the pearl nautilus is another. And the way that this animal grew, you can see it would have started quite small. Each one of these is a chamber and the, the actual creature lived in each one of these chambers as it grew into adulthood. It existed at this size, probably in this area here and it used the rest of its shell for buoyancy. Travelling with the currents to get food, it will have filled this area with air and using that, it created a buoyancy and it probably travelled in, in groups as well. Now, it's difficult to tell when this ammonite actually existed. As I've said, the inland sea lasted a long time, 130 million years ago to about 90 or so million years ago. And because this is one of the first areas to be flooded by the inland sea, it's actually called the Aramanga Sea, it could be, quite, it could be at the beginning of the sea, it could be at the end, it's, it's, it's hard to say. There's so much that we don't know. Perhaps if we had the correct scientific tools here with us now, we could give you an exact age. But I want you to think about an environment perhaps similar to the Great Barrier Reef, in a way, you can imagine. This is a fascinating, coloured, all sorts of multicolours here, corals of all sorts. But there would have been other animals too. There were things such as Chronosaurus queenslandicus, which is a pliosaur, a huge marine reptile, similar to a crocodile, but with flippers, and a lot bigger. There were plesiosaurs, those ones with the long necks and flippers. There were ichthyosaurs, Ichthyosaurs look similar to dolphins. Now the ammonites were a huge group of animals. They all died off at the end of the Cretaceous period along with the dinosaurs when an asteroid collided with the Gulf of Mexico. An interesting thing about that collision is that the Gulf of Mexico was a shallow sea such as the inland sea in Australia. But when the asteroid hit it was actually shallow and there was limestone at the base of it, just like this limestone. When the asteroid impacted, powdered limestone went up into the atmosphere and perhaps if the asteroid had hit a deeper area of the ocean, the extinction wouldn't have occurred with such the violence that it did and uh, I wouldn't be here talking about the ammonite right now. Now the last thing I'd like to add is that ammonites grew to all different sizes up to the size of tractor tyres. So here at the Flinders River, we're seeing absolute proof that there was an inland sea in Australia. And compared to the history of this planet, it actually only happened yesterday. There were many inland seas in Australia. There was once an inland sea in which over 400 million years ago, nautiloids the size of semi-trailer trucks used to swim in that kind of ocean. So the sea has come in and out many, many times in the ancient past. This is an ammonite from the Aramunga Sea. We're currently in the Aramunga Basin. And it's a fascinating example of deep time and our ability to look back and imagine an incredible ancient world just as fascinating as the world around us now. What I'm doing at the moment is drawing in the fleshy element of the animal. Now, the fossil, as it is, is only part of the story. It's obviously the shell is the only part that's fossilized. 
but in drawing in the rest of the animal, what I'll be able to show you is something of a sketch of what this creature actually looked like. What I'm drawing here is actually the fleshy element of the ammonite. Now the ammonite was a cephalopod. It was similar in many respects to the pearl nautilus which exists today. It had these tentacles and it most likely swam backwards. This element of the animal is fascinating as well. It probably started quite small and as it grew these different chambers grew with it. It only existed in probably about this part of its shell. The rest of it it used for buoyancy. It was able to float up and down moving with the currents and potentially lived as part of a larger group. You can see it's probably got quite large eyes such as the pearl nautilus today. And one of the fascinating things about the ammonites is the size to which they grew. You can imagine something like this but the size of a tire tractor. They died out with the dinosaurs at the end of the Cretaceous period. It's a fascinating creature of a very different time in the inland sea of Australia that we call the Aramunga Sea.